<laughs> All right, guys, so, so now we're going to pick back up where we've been talking about uh, Greece. We've been highlighting some famous mathematicians. And so today, we're going to talk about Pythagoras. And Pythagoras has a very important theorem. Anybody have any idea what it is? Pythagoras? Pythagorean theorem, you got it. So what we're going to be going over is a little hands-on proof of the Pythagorean theorem. Now, some of you might remember or might know the theorem. But I want you guys to see why it works. Because if you just memorize the theorem, you'll likely forget it later on. But if you prove it, you understand why it works, you'll likely remember it uh, for a pretty long time. So what I'm giving you right now is three squares and a triangle. Now what I want you to do is kind of try to piece these together. And you might kind of see how it works pretty quickly. See, see if you can kind of make them, make, make them fit. Just kind of which I think might, might go together. Think about messing up the squares and the so for the most part it looks like for the most part everybody kind of figured out what we're, what we're trying to get at here so <clears throat> so let's take our turn with that we have Now the squares I cut out one. Uh, one square had a side measure of three inches. One had a side measure of four inches, and one had a side measure of five inches. And so here's our triangle. So let's say this is our uh, our side with three. This is our one with four, and this is our one with five. So where's that smallest square going to go? Right here. Bottom. Bottom. All right. That's not really a square, but. Now, what's the now? How do we find the area of a square? Right? Length times width. So, in this case, in a square, all sides are the same. What would that be? Nine. 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 So, three squared. And then the two other squares will follow. Four squared. Five squared. So. If I just assign letters for each of these squares, so I just said A, B, and C. What do you think that, that formula would be for any measurements I give? A squared plus B squared equals C squared? That's right. Because <laughs> let's, let's look at it with this example. So here's our A right here, four squared. Here's our B right here, three squared. And then finally our C on the hypotenuse, that's five squared. All right, what's well, four squared? 16. 16. Uh, we already said three squared, nine, and then five squared. 25. 25. Add 16 plus nine, what do we get? 25. 25. And that's the Pythagorean theorem. See, now you remember it. You saw it, you remember it. Now, for the history part, we are talked a couple days ago about the rise of the Minoan and uh, Mishnahian cultures and how that eventually led into the Greek cultures. Now, we didn't necessarily have time to get to the Greek cultures because we didn't have that pep rally and uh, great to see the wild cats uh, wonderful place. But, we're gonna go in a little bit short uh, activity regarding that. Um, so um, I want like three groups of four each. So how many people do you have? Yeah, yeah. Um, y'all, y'all split that up. Um, how do you want to do that? Let's see. Uh, everyone.
it's got electronic devices, everyone can access the internet. If you don't, your partner probably has one or uh, opportunity here. So. <laughs> um, so, <laughs> I want you guys to uh, uh, research Greek theater. I want you guys to research Greek religion. And I want you guys to research Greek war. Now, I'm going to give you about five or so minutes, and I want three facts about each different thing war, religion, and theater. seems to be uh, finished. I'm going to start with uh, war over here. The war group. How are you going? Uh, they talk about like the Iliad and stuff like that. Of course, you like the, the Peloponnesian War and stuff like that whenever the Greeks fall the uh, Romans or the Trojan sheep. Uh, but we just got to read a book in one of my history classes and they were like uh, talking about how they had like the phalanx, which is like the battle formation. They had like uh, a row of like 50 soldiers and like that had like 12 rows and the younger um, like army men would be in the back and the oldest veterans would be in the front and how the veterans would be taking a woman under their wing of the young ones. Good. How about uh, religion? How, how are y'all faring? Um, <laughs> <laughs> in Sacramento. But three facts. We have uh, that there were animal sacrifices, sacrifices made to the gods. Um, they say like what kind of animals? Um, I'm gonna say like sheep. I maybe so, have heard that. Right. <laughs> maybe <laughs> goats. Maybe. <laughs> um, and then um, they had ten or more Greek gods that they worshipped. I couldn't find the exact number. So, so uh, a pantheon, mm -hmm. like many. Many gods. Yeah, that's a Greek word, by the way. And. And then we said that there was a temple that was the dwelling place, and they believed that each 
God dwelled in that place, or that you went there. So you pray to that God. How about a theater group? Uh, one of the things we found was that like the whole theater thing at Sarah College the Greek, like the Greeks placed a lot of power in like spoken word. So it started with just like storytelling and stuff. Like once they got like storytelling stage, then they put props in and it got more and more elaborate. So it started with storytelling. Well it started mainly in uh, Athens, uh, was the center of it, but then it spread out further from that to promote common identity. One person up there at the beginning just telling a story, but as time went on, they realized that the people that could tell it with the most emotion and the most accurate, or well not accurate, but the most interesting details was going to be more popular and get more people to watch the stories. So they started getting more people to act out different parts, and that made more people come watch, and that's how it turned into a big group. So popularity, just saying, so popular, popularity, popularity concepts. Popularity concepts. See, those are some good facts, guys. So now we're doing what we've been doing. We're going to take that uh, Greek mathematician. We're going to dive in a little bit deeper. So I want y'all to look at uh, what did he believe about mathematics, and then also what are some interesting facts about his life and what was he going through historically that time. All right.